the day we changed comic ages, June 1st, 2011. <laughs> Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. And in association with Odd Fellows Thoughts at oddfellowsthoughts.wordpress.com, Travis is with us again. Hi, Travis. Hello. Did I, did I say that the, the, the URL correctly? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, Travis, we're here to talk mm-hmm. about the uh, the big news coming out of DC Comics. The same day, the day and date, digital comics and print comics across the line. Isn't that great news? Sure. Doesn't matter to me at all. <laughs> uh, so you were supposed to go, no, 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 that's not it. Yeah. Uh, no, really, of course. The other elephant in the room, huh? It, yes, the other elephant. So, yes, there's that whole uh, day and date thing, but... Um, really, we're here to talk about the 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 big news from starting from last Tuesday, which was the DC relaunch, reboot, new number ones, whatever you want to, how, however you want to refer to it. Even though I know some postings have been saying it's not a reboot. Reboot. Well, that's DC, isn't it? Aren't they the one doing damage control, saying it's not a reboot? Probably. That's probably where it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, well, because Dan had a Dan had a. Um, Dan Didio had a came out a couple days after the initial. Oh my God, this is going to happen! Didn't he send a letter to somebody saying, you know, it's a relaunch, it's not a reboot? Yeah, I don't know where I saw that out. I saw it someplace. Anyway, yeah, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? <laughs> interesting is is a way to put it. Yeah. 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 Well, well, obviously, I had the the initial same reaction that most. Hardcore DC fans had. Oh my God! But, you know, I, <laughs> the sky is falling. The sky is falling. Basically, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of past it now. Now I'm nervously waiting to see what comes out. And the only part that concerns me is, is there are books that I really don't want messed with, and if they get messed with, I'll be really sad. But you know, am I going to froth at the mouth and say I'll never read another DC comic again in my life? No. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, I've decided that I'm going to have to. Granted, it's been what now four or five days since the announcement, so I've had time to settle into the fact that obviously I'm just going to have to go along for the ride because it's not like I really have any control over it, right? Not unless I can convince well, a lot of other readers to, you know, suddenly ignore the whole thing. Which well, so that's that's your choice. Either either you continue to buy the stuff they're going to put out in September or not. Yeah. Right. We'll Here, see. let me uh, let me go back and just quickly uh, read through the announcements and uh, or yeah the announcements and some of the things that have been said at the very beginning of this, and then we can talk about that. Sure. So on Tuesday, May thirty first, uh, on the DC uh, yeah the DC Nation blog, the source. Um, let's see here on Wednesday, October uh, October wow August thirty first. DC Comics will launch a historic renumbering of the entire DC Universe line of comic books with 52 first issues, including the release of Justice League by uh, Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. And that comes out the same day as Flashpoint number five. So those are the only two books that are re- that are releasing that last week in August. Sure, but didn't they spend like, uh, you know... A week plus telling us that that was the only thing that was going to be released? What, Flashpoint number five? Yeah, five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's been the only thing that we've known about for uh, le- yeah, at least a week. Probably, I think, maybe So do you think they times. advanced the Justice League thing? Mm. Or were they were always planning on releasing it the same and they just were kind of I think, not lying I th- to us but not telling us the whole truth? Yes, I think that's true. I think that they were planning on doing that. Uh, or, although I have been reading uh, some stuff online that, that suggested that they wanted to get ahead of the rumors and publications coming out of uh, the uh, Bleeding Cool, so they wanted to perhaps get the news out there from them instead of it being leaked. But wow. I've also I've also read some things that suggest that perhaps DC, it's proper, uh, not people within DC just kind of letting these things slip, but but actually editorial was was maybe uh seeding some stuff to bleeding cool about these things well i'm sure i'm sure but who you know who knows for sure yeah whatever what how how it got up but anyway yeah so flashpoint number five was coming out uh the only thing coming out at the end of august and now we have justice league from johns and lee and then in september and we'll see the the solicitations here in a couple weeks uh what else is coming out in september the, the other 51 comics from DC. 
Well, we already know what some of them are. Yes, we do. So, what, what do you want to do? You want to run down the stuff that that has been officially announced? I know there's a, there's a lot of things that is being talked yeah. about, but DC itself has not announced those particular ones. But so, do you do you want to run down the list of the ones that have been officially announced? Sure. Do you have that? Yeah, I do. So, you know, we're looking at what eleven titles, I believe. Um, and of course, the first one you mentioned is the um, Justice League number one. That's you know. Um, do you want to talk about these as we go down? Well, why, why, why don't you do the the, the whole, the whole okay. list and then we can. And so then, um, then they they also announced um, new Wonder Woman, um, written by um, uh, Brian Aralzio and um, um, art it? by Cliff Chang. Okay. And and what uh, Aquaman number one, Flash number one, Firestorm number one, and Green Arrow. Um, Hawkman. Oh, Savage Hawkman. Savage Hawkman. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Justice League International, <laughs> Mr. Terrific, Captain Atom, and uh, DC Universe Presents is what they've officially announced they're going to be actual titles. Well, then, and then, but then they follow that up with uh, Green Lantern, Green Lantern oh. Core, Green Lantern New Guardians, and Red Lanterns. So, so yeah, so now we have what? Uh, how many is that? One, two, 15? three, four, five, six, Yes, fifteen total that they've officially announced. Yeah. But then we've gotten uh, a few, I think mostly from Bleeding Cool, um, some things that have, have come out, which, and, and and some of these are kind of obvious, right? Batman, Superman, they're going to have those are going to be there. Right. Action Comics, Detective Comics. I mean, those you got to have those. Although there is some question now if if those were actually renumber at one, but we'll see. Um, and then there's been some talk about Teen Titans, which actually there's something new today about yeah. that. Uh, Batwoman, Grifter, My Greatest Adventure, Omac, Batgirl, and Nightwing. Do you have any others? Th- those are the ones that I've I've called from from various sources. Um. No, I, I think that's I think that's all the ones that I've seen that I've seen him talking about too. So if if those all are true, the ones I just mentioned, that gets us to about halfway to fifty two. Mm-hmm. If if not exactly halfway, I'd have to recount those. But so there's still a lot of damn comics coming out in sure. September. But but there's a lot of comics out there though. I, mean, I you know I haven't actually you know gone through and counted out what DC produces and what's going to be produced when this fifty two hits. But that's going to put them pretty close to. To where it's at. I don't know if there are actually 52 ongoing, you know, superhero titles, but they have to have about 52 titles going on at any one time. You mean right now? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's true. I think I, if I remember correctly, there were 50, 54, 56. Because mm-hmm. I looked at uh, I looked at the Mayo report on Bleeding Cool uh, just before the announcement. Mm-hmm. And he was run, doing the numbers, the number crunching on that. And I think it was fifty four, fifty six. Uh, I, yeah. I I could be wrong, of course, I, and I don't have that link up. But but yeah, fifty some issues of comics. And but I mean, but I mean, the big thing here is that fifty two number ones in September. Yeah, that sucks. That's a lot of damn comics. Yes, it is. And if they think everybody's going to buy into, it's number one. I got to get it. So what's fifty two times three dollars? That's a serious <laughs> chunk of change. Yeah. If so, you were really thinking you were gonna pick up all of those number ones. It's over a hundred hundred and fifty bucks just, just for those. Uh huh. So, well or you or you wait what four weeks and you buy it digitally at the lower cost, right? Right, so that was one of the things they talked about too. Because that digital plan is you can buy it at pro, at cover price day of release. Right. Or you can wait longer and then get them as a at some cheaper rate. Yes. I so looking. Okay, so I, I have it right here. DC will. Uh, this is also from Bleeding Cool. I love this website, by the way. Um, uh, this is from Bob I don't Wayne. Know trust. You well, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> there, there, there was a lot of rumors coming out, with, uh, mostly from Bleeding Cool about this stuff. But, but they, I mean, they they update their information as it becomes uh, official from from the the publisher. So. Right. Um, but th- I mean, this is this is actually from the the letter to retailers that that DC senior VP of sales Bob Wayne sent out. Right. 
Um, uh, basically, oh and, and oh, and this is where I think this is probably where it started as far as it is not a reboot, quote unquote. Right. So I mean that was coming from him. Um, let's see here. So they will DC will hold the line at two ninety nine on print and digital, dropping to one ninety nine digital after four weeks, with three ninety nine slash two ninety nine on oversized issues. Uh, and they talk about some variant covers, blah blah, for retailers. But I don't care about that. I don't care about variants. Do you do you do you uh, do you care about variant stuff at all? Well, it, I like looking at the covers. Sure, uh, but but do you? One. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, I, and I've only been tempted even, a few I, times. Quite honestly, I don't even know how you go out the process of getting those. I mean, because for me, I get I don't I don't really have much in the way of a local comic book store, so I. You know, I get my stuff all online. And, Wait, does, um, doesn't your online store offer you the variant covers as well to order? I'm not sure you even know how to go about getting them. Oh, the truth, I haven't really looked into it. I mean, I know it's there. I know it's I know it's there, but I have not actually looked at the process of that because they look spendy, and I can't imagine you know paying. Uh, I don't know the the cost of two or three comic books for one comic book. I, I much rather <laughs> if I got that money to spend, I much rather spend it on more stories well yeah it's yeah that, that's that's the way i approach it as well but there have been a few times where i've been really tempted to get that that double or more cost variant cover just because it looks so nice yeah but then i'm gonna put it in the bag and i'm gonna stick it in the box <laughs> so it, it True. Loses something. if i'm gonna you know <laughs> i'm gonna stick it on my wall as a piece of art well, that's different like i said i i was tempted i, I didn't yeah. go along i didn't uh, follow through with it because I'm, I'm a cheap bastard, and I, I want more. I want more out of my comics than than just you know a cover, a nice looking cover image. Yeah. So, so yeah. So you get the whole day or the digital side of it, which uh, at this point I'm not really all that uh, interested in. Although I do like the fact that they're dropping the price after a month to a dollar ninety nine, which to me, uh, I'll just throw this out there, and we, <laughs> we can because we talked a lot about digital comics last time, but. Um, a dollar ninety nine really should be like the top price for any any comic that comes out of DC or Marvel to me. For me to even consider buying, I really ninety nine cents is is kind of like I think is, is a sweet spot. I I may buy a few more because I because I, I told you um, from the last time we talked I I bought a few issues of uh, final not not a few I bought the the final night miniseries from nineteen ninety six. Uh-huh. From Comicsology because they were having a sale for things that had to do with Green Lantern. Sure. And there was there was a tie-in with that from Green Lantern at that time, and so I, I picked those up and read them uh, a couple days ago. Uh, and for ninety nine cents, yeah, that, that was that was an okay experience. Um, I'm still not sold on the whole digital versus having the actual comic. The, the print comic, but for ninety nine cents to catch up on a on a storyline that I'd ne- I hadn't read from back then that I wanted to, sure, yeah, I was okay, but I, no way would I pay a dollar ninety nine for those. No way. Yeah, well, that's that's definitely how it is for me. How I, I I want the actual book, but, but we know that I'm I, I, digital's great, um, as long as it doesn't kill the, it as long as it doesn't kill my comic book experience. Digital's great. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk about that because uh, the so we have this big announcement. DC's going to do all number ones, fifty-two number ones, um, and they're restarting everything. Uh, so some of the some of the stuff that's coming out is that, that these these are it's not changing everything that's been building up these you know these last months or even few years. Like the whole Blackest Night thing that hasn't that doesn't just go away. Um, that I mean Oof. that. That event happened, but but what they're talking about is that they're kind of not kind of they're they're de-aging the heroes somewhat and trying to bring bring in new readers and bring us old guard along for the ride. But but they're 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 restarting is not really the right word here. Um, they're just kind of reintroducing, perhaps, is a better word. These these characters and 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 the the, the various titles that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell what was your you you, you said before, but but uh, tell me again, what was your initial reaction to this this idea? Oh my god, no! <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I just the whole the the idea of everything that we know basically being flushed on a toilet and starting over from scratch again. 
is somewhat disturbing. Um, if that's really what they're going to do. I mean, yeah, I guess it's hard for somebody new to get into comics to read something they don't know something about. Um, but I guess in my opinion, you aren't very adventurous if you can't just pick up a book and start reading it. I mean, if it's if the book is just so you know steep with um, old mythology, yeah, it's going to be really hard to follow. But I don't think really there are many of that books that do that. Yeah, you know, that, that may that try and maintain that heavy level of continuity. It's just my opinion. But um, I, you know, I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I guess if this is going to open it up and actually get people excited and you're going to get more comic book readers and whatnot, awesome. I'm not sure that that's going to, to do it, other than, as a general rule, people are just talking about comic books more, talking about DC more because of this whole, you know, this whole stunt that they're doing. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't, it, it, like I said... I, I don't know that I want to have to relearn a character. It's different if I don't know anything about the character and I'm starting out at number one, yay. I'm real curious as to how they're going to write this so it appeals to me, somebody who's been reading the DC comics for as long as, as long as they have, and um, appealing to the new person. They just better be good. And this is what it all comes down to, right? <laughs> if they aren't good books, they're screwed. Yes. Because you're going to have sour grapes from us old people who have been reading this stuff forever if you dumb it down or start it all over again and then they're not good so we lost all that history that we can at least you know enjoy not that they've taken it away from me because you haven't obviously i still own the books and whatnot and i can still read the old stuff and enjoy all those stories and stuff and they, you know they're never gonna take that away from me but significantly altering these characters you know to meet some new need and then not and then the books be crappy and you don't gain any readers out of it what was the point Making all these characters young, too, that kind of confuses me. Uh, there's some of them that feel somewhat old to me just because they, I've been reading them as long as I have. But I don't know. How many old superheroes are there outside of, like, the GSA? But I mean, depend, depends on what you define as old. Okay. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm getting old, so therefore I don't see them as being old. Well, well, I don't know. Well, you just consider Superman, right? Uh if their goal is to bring in a younger audience, which you know, I think we both agree, comics kind of needs that to some degree. Oh, oh sure, definitely. Well, you got to keep bringing new people in. Yeah, it's yeah. So, but but Superman is this this old married guy, right? So. Oh, we're gonna pick on married people, are we? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm still I'm still bitter about um, you know, Green Arrow and Black Canary breaking up. So <laughs> they they pull apart um, you know, Lois and Clark. I think that's. A mistake too. Well, yeah. I mean, Unless they're going to recourt that again. If the rumor is is that they're 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 busting that up so then they can have a, you know, some sort of bizarre love triangle between Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. That's stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's me putting it nicely. Yeah, yeah. I I, I had not heard of the love triangle. I had I I'd, oh, I'd, you? I'd seen them. That's a bleeding cool thing. The whole I, you know, hook up Lois and Clark and yeah. Well, I had seen the thing about uh, Superman and Wonder Woman becoming, yeah, possibly possible. becoming an item, but I didn't realize that there was a potential love triangle going on here. Why wouldn't there be? I'll, I actually I kind of like the idea, but but it depends on how they do it, right? I guess I don't know. <laughs> Moving on, I mean, there's just so many questions when you start looking at individual books and whatnot. If the books still exist, well, we know some of them are going to exist. Obviously, there's going to be a Superman book. There's going to be Batman books. You start backing these people's reality up, you know, so they can start all over again and do something different or whatever. There's those guys all carry a lot of baggage with them that are significant people and events within the DC universe. Mm -hmm. You start backing that stuff up, then you start questioning what everything else is. I mean, you back what you back Wonder Woman up and keep her the age she is now in the current. Um, JMS Phil Hester run, you know, where she's some young, early 20 year old person. I'm assuming, right? That's supposed to what she's supposed to be is somewhere around 23 or whatever. I think so, yeah. So, does Donna Troy still exist? You know, do some of those other, I mean, I don't know. It just seems. Yeah. It, you know, what this reminds me of is in, in, in many senses, is how things were right after Crisis. 
Right. Because, you know... Well, supposedly it didn't matter what they really wanted to do. Wasn't that what some of the writers wanted to do, Rapid that, Crisis was? That's what Marv Wolfman wanted, to, and some of the other uh, yeah. editors there wanted to do, is like, well, you know, if you, if you do this big thing where you, you basically... Well, they rebooted the DC universe, right? And and uh, you let's know, all really the, all, do it. Yeah. yeah, all these all these universes um, are gone now, and we just have the one Earth, and everything's consolidated, and you have this thing, but not that thing. Yeah, he was he was behind that. Um, let's let's restart everything at number one. But yeah. but but the the publisher, you know, they they're like, eh, I don't know about that. So they didn't do it. Right. And, and then and then you have this weird period right after crisis came out where some writers were um still telling the stories that they had started before crisis began mm-hmm. or during crisis so mm-hmm. they had to finish those up and or or um uh not knowing exactly what was in and what was out as far as the characters history and so you get these weird these weird stories where some things are in there but then like an issue later they're not and it, it was just this weird time at dc where yeah. things were just so in flux, you didn't know what was going on. It took a, a good two or three years, I think, before things kind of settled down, and we and we as fans knew what this character was about after Crisis. Uh huh. So, so, so that was a bad thing. I don't know if it was a bad thing. It was just, it, but uh, business wise, so, I think it is. I mean, it's so this just confusing could be your a really readers. Bad thing. If 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 the editors really aren't on board with making sure that they've got a clear vision as to what heck these characters are doing, this could just be the same mess up that that was then. well but i think that 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 this time is different because there that it appears that they have an idea in mind they have a plan they're starting at number one they've come out and said as as dan didio said this is from the usa today uh yeah. article we really want to we really want to inject new life in our characters in line this was a chance to start not at the beginning but at a point where our characters are younger and the stories are being told for today's audience so yeah, okay, that does that does concern me a little bit. A chance to start, not at the <laughs> beginning, but at a point where our characters are younger. Yep. Blah blah blah. Okay, but everybody I, I, better be on board. That's just it. Yes, if everybody's not on board. This uh, it's going to come apart at the seams. Well, I think this time they can DC editorial can dictate that a little bit better because of the people who are in charge. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I think it makes it probably makes a really big difference. Yeah, you know, as far as that goes. Uh, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm not against all this, and I can certainly pick up these new comics and read them for what, they're, for what they are and not – what I'm going to try and do, and I keep telling myself, is when I get some of these comics, I'm just going to read them for what they are and not play the, well, what about and what if and, and <laughs> what happened and, and just read it. And read it and enjoy it for what it is because obviously that stuff that's before it, either the whole Flashpoint stuff's going to straighten it out for us. You know, and, and set it all in its place to some degree, or we're going to read it and find out what's going on, right? As opposed to, you know, using our vast DC knowledge to say that's out of character or this isn't right or whatever. But I tell you, these these people who are going to be writing these books to start out with, they're setting the new mold, right? Yeah. When books come out. How these characters are in these first books is we have to if we're supposed to take this stuff at face value and not look at the old. At all the prior history, this is how these people are now. So if somebody writes some of these people poorly, you know, or they come off as a jackass, well, we can assume that those characters are jackasses, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how I look at it. I mean, that's how I'm looking at it is if I'm supposed to just take these as being, you know, fresh new comics and what they are and this kind of, you know, starting from here, and if this is a whole new thing, except for some of those Green Lantern titles – if this is a whole new thing, it's it's a whole new thing. It'll be interesting. I mean, I, I you know, I'm excited about it and um, very frightened at the same time. <laughs> yeah. About what about what all it's going to be. So did you uh, did you see any of the um, article or forum posts from 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 fans um, or comic readers? I, I I shouldn't use fans to include everybody that reads comics, but. Um, uh, especially DC Comics, but uh, did you did you read any of those responses to the to this to this news that it, as it came out? No. So I did. Oh God. Because <laughs> I was curious, right? I wanted to I, see. I, I didn't. The first couple of days, I didn't need anybody to help feed into my <laughs> my, own, my own paranoia. And oh my God, what are they doing to, you know, 
seventy five percent of the comic books I read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but but so I did. I, I went on to Bleeding Cool and CBR, and you know, I just kind of read a few things. And basically, um, you know, there were there were there were quite a few posts of you know people that were excited about the news, and ex- I don't mean excited necessarily in the positive sense, but just. You know, this is something new and different, and you know, I'll be interested depending on what's going on and who's doing what and all this stuff. So there, it was, a ca- uh, I guess, cautious optimism, perhaps. Right. The majority of the things that I read were like F, F- U D C. Right. Now, now nothing, nothing I'm 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 reading right now, nothing I'm buying from you right now matters. So I, I'm done with you. I don't care about what's going on. Just a big F U. And yep. I'm, and and and. and uh, and I, and I get that to a certain degree. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I understand that, you know, change is kind of scary sometimes. And, yeah, sure. you can look at it like all the stuff that we've been reading for the last few years at least maybe is no totally longer valid. now. Yeah, no longer valid. But you know what? I, I, what I'd like to know is what the ages are of these people that are posting um, because – and this is just purely from my perspective, you know, being a, a comic fan, a comic reader for, you know, over 30 years now, I've seen change like this. I mean, we, we went through it, you and I, uh, with D, with, uh, with Crisis, right? Yep. And yep. and there have been some other, other type, that, you know, DC does this about every 10 years or so. So it's kind of like, uh, this is passe for me. It's these, these big changes just happen. And Marvel does it to a certain degree, or to a lesser degree, I should say. But they, they do things like that. It's usually on a per character basis as opposed to a, a whole Marvel Universe type thing. Right. But. Right. But it's just part of comics. It's like just like characters who die come back. You know, we it's just just one of those little in jokes that that we fans know. You know, someone dies, they come back in a few years. Uh, every every however many years it is, you know, the the publisher decides, hey, we're going to try this new idea and we're going to go down this road instead of that road. Uh-huh. And so for me, it's not like yeah, it's kind of it's kind of daunting, but. I'm interested in seeing where they're going with this because sure. because mostly I'm 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 a big DC fan. I like DC comics. I like these characters. I like a lot of the creators that are that are that's working on DC right now and I'm really interested in seeing what they do with this. So did you also see uh Tom Brevoort his his tweets about this? He, so he's he's the uh the guy from from Marvel, right? Uh-huh. Uh what is his Senior Vice President of Publishing. Publishing, right? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing I saw from him was uh, he said the same thing, you know, and and Brevoort's done this before uh, when DC announced uh, Johns becoming the Kreef, Kreef, wow, Chief Creative Officer of DC Comics, and and the whole shakeup there with Dan DiDio and Jim Lee uh-huh. becoming co-publishers and all that. You know, he he he's he's really good about digging at DC whenever oh, yeah. he can, right? Oh yeah, which has pissed me off. In the, <clears throat> excuse me, has pissed yep. me off in the past. But you know, you know, it's part of it's a good-natured, you know, rivalry type thing. But but uh, at the first post that I, I of his on Twitter that I read about was his. Well, you know, you don't need to read anything that uh, from now until September. Right. But then uh, you know, on the, on the flip side, I have to give him credit because there's there's a few things uh, that he said. Uh, in favor, sort of. He he kind of does these backhanded compliments to DC. <laughs> well, so, I think he does that. I think he does that because he doesn't want to come across as being a total jackass. Yeah. I mean, because he he, you know, he says that smart ass thing, and then after the fact, kind of goes, oh well, mm, you know, someday I may have to work with some of these people I'm insulting, you know, because, you know, nobody stays with one company forever. At mm-hmm. some point or other, they end up going back and forth. Mm-hmm. So I think he, I think he's like, okay, now that I've said that, and you know, I'm insulting people that I may have to work with again at some point. I, I better, I, I better be nice to some degree. Yeah. I've heard him say, I've heard him say crappy stuff. I've heard him say crappy stuff in person. So. Oh really? Well, yeah. You know, you come in to, you know, you know, you go to the, you go to the comic conventions and they, you know, they have the, the DC panel or the Marvel panel right after one or the other. So, you know, get the <laughs> panel early, end up catching the latter half of another panel. And I don't sit on sit in on too many Marvel panels, but I've certainly been at the end of them when they've said, you know, when the whole price change thing was going on and some of the other stuff, you know, them say some unnecessary things. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and, yeah, and that, remember that I mean, whole... Is, isn't, he, isn't he one of the people that's behind the whole, hey, you know, send us a cover and we'll... Yeah, I was just going to bring that uh, up, yeah. 
full mm-hmm. horse crap stuff. So yeah, I'm not very excited by yeah. by, by him. Um, well, he's here... one of those people I end up I end up seeing his tweets and whatnot, but I try to ignore him <laughs> just because. Well, here's here's uh... he lights the fan boy up in me and makes you want to punch him in the face. So. <laughs> Well, here here's something that maybe will make you want to not punch him in the face, but um, we'll see. So here here's a here's a so here's a reader comment, um, and then he he replied. Oh well, I, yeah, I saw some of those where he talks about the fact that afterwards, you know, I mean, he's like, well, you know, I think it's I think it's great of them, and it's probably a smart move for them, and yeah, basically, yeah. So so here the, 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 re- the reader here says DC Comics just made it 100 percent certain I'll never pick up another book anytime soon. I, you know, I don't. I don't quite get what he's. It's all the money I'd save. What, well, okay, but 100 percent certain I'll never pick. I'll. He says I'll never pick up another book anytime soon. That's the so, talk. Yeah, I hope I never have to see such a desperate move from Marvel, rebooting slash revamping the DC line since the first crisis has only led to terrible things. I don't agree with that. Uh, make mine Marvel. A Marvel fanboy. Okay, so Brevoort yeah. then says, "I'm happy you feel that way, obviously about Marvel, but I don't really agree." At this point, doing something massive like this is the smartest thing that DC can do in order to try to capture a large audience and get them to check out their books. Again, backhand a compliment, but you know, kind of a nod. You know, get that two ways. Yeah. Yeah, DC sucks so bad they gotta do some desperate measure to try and. See, I really think that's what he's he's implying oh, he there. He is. Like he said, another thing, I think it's actually a smart play. This is all or nothing time for DC. They'll give their give this their best hit. So again, I, you know, he's he's somewhat supportive, but you know, he's also saying, "Hey, you guys, you DC guys, yeah. you're, you're you're desperate now. I understand that. Good luck." Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it, the the reaction has been really interesting, and 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 uh, you know, the, the the few people that or not the few, the, some of the people that we follow on Twitter that have been posting about this, you know, it's been really interesting to read those comments over time. You're right. Oh yeah. Going, going exactly what you said. He's like, oh my god, you know, and oh, yeah, I can't believe you're doing this. Yeah, the, the fear, fear of the unknown. And, and, I mean, I, I, you know, and I'm, I still have some fear. I, I, there are titles, I fear what's going to happen to them, with uh, the, out of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know that conversation we had about about um, Zatanna. Mm-hmm. No worries now. That title's toast. That's, yeah, I think so too. You, you know it. I, why? I mean, they like Denny, so they let him, you know, continue to write that story until mm-hmm. until September, I guess. I don't know, and and some of them they shut down, you know, for whatever reason because they need people to do other things and whatnot. I, I guess I don't know. So I mean, I, to, to, some, to some degree, I understand people saying, "Well, what's the point of reading what from now until then?" Other than I'm not reading the comics just to add to my, you know, expansive knowledge of the DC universe and whatnot. You know, it's, I mean, I read to read some good stories and enjoy the characters that are there. So. This next couple of months isn't going to affect that, but I'm also reading it knowing that some of those titles are going to be gone. I just mm-hmm. can't imagine that they're going to that they're going to come back. So, have you been uh, contemplating uh, any of these titles? I'm I'm thinking specifically for myself, Justice League of America, maybe Zatanna, um, Teen Titans for sure. I was I was going to drop those here in the next few months, but now uh, now I'm you know I'm thinking I will just well I'm dropping them. After this month, or sorry, after May's issues, I was going to drop them, um, or June's, depending on where the story was. Uh, but now I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm thinking I'm just going to continue with them until they stop at the end of August. Why? Just, just to, just, just for see the collection's where, sake. Partly, and also just to see where they were going with the story before it to ends. To see if, to see if they managed to end it. Yeah. Or, or if they just it just stops. Just stops. Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the the impression I'm getting from from stuff I've been reading is that they're they're trying to hurry up. Those people are and scrambling to try and to to finish their stories. Yeah, it was the like impression like, I like Batman Incorporated, you know, because that was supposed to be a two year thing that Morrison yep. was going to work on, and now it's going to be what? So the the sixth issue just came out, I think. Yeah, and you know, so I'm going to do some I'm going to do some researching and dig back and when people are saying the stuff that they were saying. To try and get some sense as to when did they know this is really what they were going to do? <laughs> when did they have a solid plan of okay, you know, this is we're going to you know pull the plug on the universe and I don't think you're going to find that information out there. I uh, think you, you don't think so. You don't think we can put it together? You don't think we can put it together when Morrison was saying, "Oh, this is going to be I envisioned this," and then when he quit saying that, 
you know, and some of those other people. So some of I mean, no, obviously there's lots of creators and freelance people who, who aren't, who do DC work, but aren't so tied into the universe that they would have as much foreknowledge as to what's going on. Uh, you know, um, I, I'm sure when we went to in March, they knew they were pulling the plug on the whole thing. You know, when, you know, we, when we went to the Emerald City Comic Con, I did think about that because remember how frustrated and upset we were that they weren't telling us anything at all about what was yeah. coming out. Yeah, they can't. There's and it was all about Flashpoint. Read Flashpoint. Right. Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. That, that just pissed me off. And oh, well, obviously me. now. Well, yeah, obviously they knew then that they were doing that. Yeah, it's just a well, matter. Well, that's of, when they started. That's when they started canceling some of those titles. Because you know, we looked at it. And I kept going, okay, how come? How come they're canceling if – if sales is the reason they're canceling Doom Patrol, Rebels, um, you know, and other titles that I, that I was reading that they seem to cancel a whole bunch of. Um, if it was sales, then there was half a dozen to a dozen other comics that should be gone too. Mm-hmm. You know, Gotham City Sirens, you know, Zantana. There's just a, a bunch more of them that all should have got the plug pulled on them if, that's, if that was the rationale for it. And um, some of those creators that were on some of those titles that got bumped didn't seem that bothered by it. It seemed like there was already a plan in place of them doing other stuff because there was. Right. A large portion of them were either going to be working on some of the um, Flashpoint stuff or they're already scrambling to work on um, on what's next. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I talked with um, – um, Pete Wood there at the you know, artist for um, Action Comics. You know what's what's next? You know after you take this break because I knew he was going to take a break and go on vacation. What was next? And man, he absolutely couldn't say. And right because apparently the 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 non non disclosure agreements between the creators and DC were were really tight. Yeah, <laughs> based on what I've I've read. You know, and that's you know that's great and all, but you know now you start looking back on it, you go well no wonder. I mean they were just like. It was ridiculous at the the lack of stuff that they were going to tell us about anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which, why did they even show up, I guess, when they <laughs> at those conventions? You know, why bother? <laughs> well, I guess Marvel didn't. So, I mean, I give props you know, to DC for at least showing up. But like, yeah, yeah. They showed up and told, and told us nothing. And they said, well, we, got big, we got big plans coming, but we can't really tell you what they are. Yeah. Not just give us the, you know, what about Flashpoint thing? You know? You know, I'll give them this. They're going to give us a bunch of new stuff. You know, they kept telling us that, you know, we were complaining about them canceling all these titles and it was all going to be Superman and Batman. They kept saying, well, read Flashpoint and after Flashpoint, it's all going to change. You're right. They are. But like I said, I, I just, <laughs> sometimes when I'm really bored, I'm going to go back and see if I can get right. a timeline as to what it's, so I can have a sense of how long ago did they have this thing planned. Because like I said, I, I hope to shout that this isn't, that this isn't, this isn't half-assed. You know what I mean that they've got this thing planned out well. Well, at the, it'll be it'll be really a, a bummer if this thing flops. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, let's come back to that in a second. But but you gotta you gotta you gotta know that once they announced the restructuring at DC Comics, and, and it became technically DC Entertainment, right? Uh huh. That's something to um, do was- that they got, they got all the, you know, they got Johns, they got Dedio, they got Lee, they got some other people in there, you know, uh, the the senior staff up there, with uh, Diane, what's her name, Diane Nelson, yep, who is the publisher, or uh-huh. um, not the publisher, what is she? She runs, she runs, she runs DC Entertainment, right? Right. Okay. She's the head exec. Yeah. So they get the, all these people together and they're like, okay, what are we gonna do to make DC Comics number one? You know, that, that that's got to be the, the the basic question that they ask, right? Well, yeah. How are we going to improve sales? If not, if not number one, at well, least how are we going to? I'm sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, number one right. in sales, right. right? So they, you know, we have these, you know, the Batman film property. We have the Green Lantern film coming out. We don't, really, you know, they got that. That's a whole other issue to talk about. But, but uh, you know, the the marriage between the comics and the films, um, and what to do there because they've had some big flops recently. Um, I'm thinking of Superman Returns specifically. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, they had to get they had to get all these people in a room together and say, okay, what can we do? Right. And so, how long ago was that that they announced that? That was two years ago. Yes. Right? Yeah. So is wasn't it right before uh, Emerald City Comic Con yes, 2009? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so that they do that, they bring in Bob Harris, all that stuff. They they had to have st- at least started the the ideas then. 
about what they're going to do. Whether or not they, you know, the whole uh, start at number one after Flashpoint thing was was talked about, they had to have started it then. So we can at least, you know, sort of pinpoint the, the I think, the beginning of it. Um, and then, you know, you can go back. And, uh, I would say you'd be able to go back about two years ago and, and go forward from that point and then see what, what's right. going on. Right. But then, okay, so then so then uh, you have you had, you had Blackest Night coming out that year. And then uh, uh, this year is, you know, they're building up to Flashpoint. And then so maybe even a year ago is when, the, you know, they knew. They knew they were going to do it this way, and then so they had to build up this stuff. But then, then I think, well, then, the, but then why, why start things like Batman Incorporated, you know, or uh, why restart Birds of Prey, or you know, things like that, if they knew they were right. going to be doing this kind of right, stuff? Right, right. Some of that stuff that just doesn't make sense. Especially Birds of Prey. Think about that for a second. So they had they had that that uh, that comic, and it stopped. And then you know, there's a big fan outcry, and, and now I see why. Now that I'm getting the the latest volume of it, mm-hmm. uh, and and so they start that, and then we're what? We're twelve issues in. Yeah. A year into it, and here in a couple months, they're gonna they're gonna stop it again. It's like what? Why do that? I don't understand why they did some of those things, because they had to have known at that point that they were gonna be doing this, or or maybe maybe they just maybe they still just had this idea. Okay, we're gonna do this 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 thing. Uh, but we're not really sure how it's going to affect how, how big how big it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they were going to start over certain things, and and but then maybe someone said, okay, no, we got to do this across the board, or it's not going to work. Type thing. I would just love to know the history of this, and I'm sure well, it will right. come out over well, the next six months, maybe a year, uh, as we get as we get things out there, and, oh, especially on somebody's deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have to wait that long, or or maybe it's not even a time issue, but. <laughs> Uh, depends on the fans' reaction, right? Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, especially well, I, hey, trust me, uh, the next cons that come up and whatnot, <laughs> I hope somebody's asking some pretty interesting questions. The news comes not, out of not, San Diego. Not, oh, is so and so going to go back to their old costume or whatever? But I'm hoping that there's a lot of fans out there asking questions. Okay, when did this thing all, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to know who's responsible because I don't want to know who I have to hunt down and beat up for you know, making a mess of my reality, yeah. as it were. Yeah. But, you know, I hope the fans are asking those kinds of questions. Hey, you know, you know, when did this thing get solidified as being how big it is and how big it's going to be and whatnot? Well, I think my guess is if if initially it's successful, we'll start getting that information out. If it's not, we it's may, lot, everybody's going to hide. We may not hear anything. Or, or they'll all pin it on Dan when they show him the door, right? <laughs> Dan or Jim. Or they won't get rid of Jim. Huh? They need to mow him, but they won't get rid of him. Ah, that's, that's probably true. He's, he's, he's a talent. He actually, yeah. pro- he actually produces a product. Okay. What Dan writes, you can't count as being a product. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's, since, we're, since we're on this. Uh, Jim Lee, I mean, um, let's let's go back and talk about some of these titles, the the, the ones okay. that have been announced. And so, obviously, let's start with uh, Justice League with Johns and Lee. Uh huh. And I'm right now. I'm I'm looking at the DC Nation. Uh, 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 I guess it's yeah. It says cover for Justice League number one, art by Jim Lee and Scott Williams. Mm-hmm. So now you got the big six here and Cyborg. Of fourteen, I hear there's supposed to be fourteen people on in the Justice League. Yeah. Okay. I I had not heard that. Yeah. So who, now who where else? I heard that number, I can't remember. But do you, do you know who did they did they uh, specify any other characters? Nope. Nope. Just what we see on the cover. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they're choosing. Is that part of their diversity? Because I mean that's a whole other thing too. You know they they once again not only did they say hey we're changing everything they once again build. The fact that DC is going to be this diverse, you know, world, mm-hmm. which I think is really interesting. You make that promise, you, you got to come through on it, or you're going to have a bunch of. I mean, I, I, some of the, you know, people I pay attention to online and whatnot, you know, are really big into the whole diversity thing. Yeah. More, you know, more females, more female, significant females, not just there, but you know, them playing a real role and not just being victims. You know, more people of color. You know, more people of different. You know sexualities and whatnot mm-hmm. uh, should be in comics. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Sure. Um, but, um, 
you know, when you make that part of your mission statement, you're going to get called on it if you don't follow through. Right. And you so can't. Is that, why, is that why Cyborg's in there? Well, see, that's the problem. You can't just throw a token um, character on there and say yeah. you're more diverse. So they got to do yeah. something more than well, just throw he's Cyborg gonna, he's in there. Have, obviously, he's going to have some. I'm only, I've only read Flashpoint number one so far. <clears throat> but obviously, have you read that yet? No, it's, it's coming this week. Well, obviously, anyway, he. He has a role in that. He has yeah. a role in in that, and so I can see if these people in, have some sense of themselves by the time the whole flashpoint thing is done, that he plays a bigger role because he plays a big role in in that in, in the current event book. Right. So it it could make sense. We'll see how flashpoint goes. Could make perfect sense for him to be there. Well, you look at the you look at the picture of the people who are on there. There's nobody on there that's tech oriented in any fashion, really. Well, I guess, depending on which Flash that is, he's a scientist. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but he's a forensic scientist, so it's that's a little okay, different. Okay, so so it makes sense for him to be there. He has a role. Sure. You know, he has a role on that team. But you are right. If they go for diversity and they just throw in anybody, <laughs> or if their version of diversity is they have a few aliens on there. You know, people don't accept that as being diversity. Well, hey, just I mean, just look at these seven the the, the seven images they got here. You have a, an Atlantean, you have uh, um, yeah, a uh, uh, Kryptonian. <laughs> the only human characters are <laughs> Hal, Batman, and uh, well, Green Lantern, and Batman, and Flash, and, and of course Cyborg. But right, but yeah, you're but right. It looks very white, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a very white team. But but it's interesting, you know, that whole – you bring up the diversity thing. It was an interesting contemplation to kind of figure out what they meant by that. Was it just diversity in titles? Was it diversity of characters in the titles? And well, and now we're – now we're I think we're starting to see that they were referring to both. Right. Uh, a little bit because that, that, that recent news – well, today's news from Bleeding Cool about the Teen Titans. Potential makeup of that team. Yeah, yeah. potential. Yeah, again, we, we don't know for sure. But, right. but yeah, you're right. They, they need, they, to me, they need to have more than just Cyborg on there uh, as, if they want to go for the whole diversity thing. Of course, yeah. the problem is, is that they have 75 years of comics history where the majority of their characters right. are white. Right. You know, and, and that's one of the things that always bugs me about the whole argument over the diversity thing, and they need to be working hard, and they need to be putting more in and whatnot. You're right. They, when they introduce new characters and whatnot, you'd hope to shout that they would invest more in some of those things to add a little more character to to the universe. But unfortunately, there is 75 years worth of Superman being a white guy. You, you, you can't change that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can change some of the people around him and whatnot. Um, and it's unfortunate that if when they decide to, you know, do some of the Green Lantern and stuff and they go to pick a Green Lantern and they pick Hal over Jon Stewart, when arguably um, people who are half our age, that, you know, Stewart's the Green Lantern they know. That's true. You know, my, my son, he'll turn 13 next week. His Green Lantern, his first Green Lantern is Stewart. He was the guy that was on the, you know, the cartoon. He was Green Lantern. You know, he doesn't know who Hal Jordan is from whatever. You know, <laughs> just what little bit I've told him about it and what few comics he happens to show up in that I'm collecting now that, you know, that he reads. Yeah. You know, so I think it's interesting. That, but that's the whole rolling back to the Silver Age, right? Yes. And so, but, so that causes a problem with the whole diversity thing. How do you introduce a new character and have those new characters be, be diverse? Because, uh, man, it's hard to break into the DC universe as a new character, is it not? Well, I think it's hard for any any publisher. For uh, It's not just DC. Well, but, yeah. But, yeah, you're right. It's it, they've. I mean, obviously they've tried. Uh, I think most recently and most successfully, and I and I put successfully in quotes here, with Blue Beetle. Um, but, you know, obviously that, you know, that, that we don't have a Blue Beetle title. Well, I'd be or, curious to see if that's one of the titles that comes out. Yeah. And if they, do, if I, they and, wisely reboot that, or he's a um, Titan at minimum. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I agree. I, that character should I should and have a, his own be, title. That would be one of their non-white characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I just, it's, it'd be really interesting to see what what they do with this whole diversity thing because I, I just what characters do they have in place that they could they could do this with? And I'm I, and I'm sure there are a bunch of them. I just can't think of any major character. Mister Terrific. Okay. <laughs> Which is one of the ten that they announced. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, hold on a second. Let's let's look. Let me look. Let me look at my list here. Um, we, we can start back. Do you, do you want to talk more about um, Justice League? Well, I, are you I, getting it? The only yeah. Yes, I will because I like John's work and and I actually do like Jim Lee's work. Yep. Um, but this image that they gave us of, of these yeah. seven characters, man, I, I like Lee's work, but I don't like these. I don't like his role as the A stylist. The stylist for DC characters. Yeah. I I didn't. I mean, I, I didn't mind the the Wonder Woman change. Even though it was kind of a throwback to the '90s when she actually wore a similar costume, mm-hmm. um, but now if you look at that image, you know, uh, and you 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 heard me, or I think you you read the stuff that I posted about this, but um, you know the the, the whole collar thing, uh-huh. the, all the all the characters, except for the ones that have masks that kind of cover their head and oh, neck, oh, they have they have they have those collars. Uh, even Wonder Woman has has a, she has this choker thing that you know, is essentially a I collar. Like, I don't like chokers on Wonder Woman. Yeah, so, that is awful. That is awful. That that goes back to you know her potential of her you know prior history and yeah. And, and I don't care that she wears pants. I really don't. Uh, I don't care if she wears a shirt. You know, I, yep. I I don't care that she doesn't wear the shorts and and the the what do you call that thing the boost boosty I don't know what they call that the that the, the girdle or whatever it is that she wears right. um, traditionally I don't you know right. I don't, there, I don't care also, that... there, there are lots of girls who who think it's fine other than it doesn't have straps so how do you fight in that thing without exactly yeah it, it needs to be better but uh <laughs> but the, it's that, a comic book yeah I know I know but but then you got then you got the the Flash and Cyborg in this picture and they've all got these chin things going on I'm like what you know, why I kind of like Flash's mask what. This Flash's mask, and I see. I don't. I'm not a Flash fan. So does Flash's mask? Is it always had the, like you know on the cross cheekbones where it's got that kind of slit? Slit? Yeah. That to some has? degree. Mm-hmm. It does. Oh. It's a little different I, in this one. I guess I've never noticed it. It looks interesting. You're right, but everything having their chin covered up, I, you know. Uh, that does for for a speedster. That makes no sense to me. Well, the whole costume doesn't make sense then. If that's the case, <laughs> it doesn't. He, does, he obviously doesn't have drag or those little ear things that he wears. Well, yeah. yeah. It would be, you know, peeling off his head, too. You're right. It, they didn't give Batman one. Thank God. Chin. That looks... That's because he has a strong chin, see? Oh, is that what you think it is? Is that Barry Allen? Is that who that is, the Flash? I'm sure it is. Okay. Yeah, he just doesn't have a strong enough chin. <laughs> see, if he had a manly chin like Batman or Aquaman, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but then, but then, cyborg. You know, it's like he. I don't mind these costumes at all, other than other than it just seems kind of funny that anyone who doesn't have a anyone who doesn't have a costume that covers up over their head, they all are sporting the same color. That yeah. cracks. That cracks me up. That's that's just stupid. You know, the Superman costume. Yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like they got rid of his red shorts. Did you notice that? It, they're gone. They, he does not have. He is not wearing underwear on the outside of his costume. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. I don't know that I like. And, and the, I guess it has actually. I mean, you know, from rumor has it that it actually has seams and stuff. Like oh that. yes, I heard about that. But actually, it looks like he's wearing clothing, as opposed to having a, um, you know, his costume painted on, quite as much. And yeah. yeah. It sounds like to me that they're they're going more for the Superman Earth One look. Yeah. From that graphic novel. Yeah. Which there's no surprise there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's – do you have anything about uh, Justice League to say? Any more about that? Well, I just think it's interesting that they put these creators on, on this on this title. Well, they had to. Why? I think they had to. Because, Why? Well, John's is – Because it's the flagship? Yeah. So you think, if, you think if they put their top talent, both of their top talent guys, and you got to consider both of them top talent guys. Right. Um, on the same title together because it's – it's the flagship comic, and you you hope everyone's going to read it, and you're going to be excited about that, and then you're going to turn around and read the other titles that branch off from it because it's the flagship title. Is that the, is that the idea behind it? Well, uh, I would agree with that statement, sure. Okay, so then the question is, how do some of these other titles that have been officially announced compete with that? Because there is no <laughs> way, there's no way any of us, no one I know, is going to actually have the money to be able to pick up all of these titles. Right. To pick all of the number ones, all of the number twos, and potentially all of the number threes to get an honest opinion of whether or not it's a title you think you want to collect or not. Right? I mean, to be serious about whether or not, it, if you really want to if you really want to be open-minded and look at all these titles and go, this may be a new experience for me and it may be something I want to read. Mm-hmm. Because this is all new. 
You know, so the sky's the limit. What do I want to read of this? There's no way I can read all of these. Um, how does I don't mean to keep picking on Mr. Terrific, but let's just go with Mr. Terrific because he's never had a title of his own. Yeah. How does he compete with that? How does he compete with with these big name people? Should, shouldn't they have put some heavy hitter on like that on there? Everyone's gonna get get Justice League just about, aren't they? Sure. I mean, because just about everybody I know to some degree that you know if they're rebooting everything, that's a title everybody's gonna be interested in. Whereas you know, I, I like I said, I'm curious to see what other titles they announce, but I don't know how, especially out of all these official titles that are announced here, Mr. Terrific has the least amount of support out of all of them. Yeah. Because, you know, he's he's a character of like 20 that's in um, um, the Justice Society right now. Mm-hmm. He, you know, it's not like he's coming. He's not like the Justice League International where they're coming off this very popular um, miniseries that was out. You know, he's not like the Flash or Aquaman or, or Wonder Woman, who obviously everybody knows who they are. Name recognition alone is going to sell a certain amount of their comics. Right. I just wonder, wouldn't you have put, you know, and the guys that are on that comic, to the best of my knowledge, aren't really big people. I mean, the writer, I think the current thing he's writing is, you know, the Titans, the villain title, that he's going to carry a bunch of people with him. When he starts to write that comic. So part of me says it makes sense that you put these big name people on the flagship book. But part of me also wonders, why don't you have some huge heavy hitter setting on these little things? If you really honestly want these new diverse titles to make it, don't you got to put somebody on there that everybody rushes to? Not because they go, Mr. Terrific, you know, I don't know who that is. So therefore I'm going to spend my money there. It's going to be Mr. Terrific. I don't know who that is, but wow, Grant Morrison's writing Mr. Terrific. And we know Grant Morrison does some great stuff, so we're going to pick it up. Yep, you are absolutely correct. You know, I think, you know, obviously it hasn't been listed here, but many places have said that Grant Morrison is doing Superman. Why? Is it because Superman's that boring they got to put Grant? <laughs> well, I think that has more to do with the All Star Superman title from a few years ago and how successful that was for DC. So, and, and I think Grant Morrison. So we're really are just repeating right ourselves. What? So we are just really repeating ourselves. Put him on a character he hasn't done before. Well, but. Yeah, whatever. I think he wants to do that character. But, but you see what I'm saying? I just, oh, yeah. I just oh, yeah. see how. I'm really curious to see what they like. Some of these other titles that come out. Because and, 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 now they're competing with each other. Because they're all. There's 52 number ones all coming out at the same time. Nobody has the money, generally, to buy all of those. So they are competing with each other. They're not competing with Marvel. They're not. They're competing with each other. Uh-huh. These char- these these characters and these creators are all competing with each other. This is why I think that they should have possibly rolled staggered. out some of this stuff. Yeah, staggered it exactly. Yeah. So you come out with your your big titles: your Superman, your Batman, your Wonder Woman, your Justice ten, League. Ten two months. Then a couple months later, ten more. Couple yes. Months, ten more. Yes, yeah. exactly. But but then you can't re- you can't relaunch the entire universe all at once doing that though. Yeah, I don't think that was unless you're only going to sell ten books. That's the problem. They can't just sell ten books. They have to have so many. I'm sure they've done the math. Right. And See, that... So, so um, that's why. You know, otherwise it would be like Last Crisis. You'd have, you know, some titles in the new world. You know, in the new way things are, and some titles, if you're still having them around, a mix up. I just, like I said, it's just one of those things I keep thinking about. Is it's real curious. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a huge comic. I'm definitely getting it. You know, I, I generally pick up the Justice League because it feels to me like it should be the flagship mm-hmm. um so i'll definitely be getting it yeah i i don't know that i'm a huge john's fan he's fine um, <laughs> I, I will actually don't i will i don't read much of his stuff yeah i started picking up um just society again right about the time he got off the title mm-hmm. um same with um you know the titans you know teen titans i i got on those things about the time he was leaving most of that stuff um and i haven't been reading the event books you know, Flashpoint's the you know first event book I've gotten since you know Final Crisis, basically. Um, so you know, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of his one. I don't like you know Jim Lee Fine. You're right though; I'm not really excited about him being a designer. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said, I like his art, but his sure. ideas for redesigns of the characters, not yeah. so much. Yeah. Anyway, I guess I don't have anything else to say about Justice League. I just, <laughs> that, that's a, that's a curious thing for me though, as to how how that whole sales thing work and with competing with each other and whatnot. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's run down the rest of these ten, um, and then you know, say what you want about it, uh, whether you're going to get it or not, or anything else you want to throw out there. But sure. um, let's see. Uh, let's start with Wonder Woman. 
I'm getting it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get it because, well, first, I love the artist. I think he does a great job. Cliff Chang? On these kind of characters and whatnot. See, now, um, I'm looking at this, the, the the image, and I, I presume this is the cover image for, for Wonder yep. Woman number one. It's the one with her banging arrows off her face. Yeah, 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 jumping through. Yeah. I, I have yeah. to say, I, I'm not that impressed with that image. I mean, it's okay, but uh, eh, eh, it's hey, all right. So what don't you like about the image? You don't just like the idea of her jumping through a hail of arrows? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, the, the, or, des- the design is fine. It's it's the – I think it most – and this may be the inker, not necessarily uh, Mr. Chang's art, but you know, I just don't like – I just don't like the way Wonder Woman looks. That, that thick that thick line? The thick that, line that, and – That's the, his style. Is that's it? That's his style, yeah. Uh, well, for all the um, Green Arrow and Green Arrow Black Canary and all the other stuff that I have that's that way, it's kind of, it's kind of his style. I, I, I see a lot of other stuff that I like a lot better than, than this. Okay. But I like the feel of this image. Oh, yeah. So, the, but the question is, and, and then we look at the writer. Azarella. Interesting pick. Interesting pick for, you got this guy who's known for, you know, seedy kind of noir crime novel kind of things, right? Yeah, doing Wonder Woman. And he's doing Wonder Woman. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. And that's what, I mean, I like Wonder Woman anyway. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I like Wonder Woman. I'd probably be picking up, unless somebody was on it that I absolutely hate, I'd probably get in to start out with just to see what it's going to be like. So I'm curious to see what his take's going to be on this, uh, how he's going to portray her. I mean, obviously, looking at this cover image, it looks like they're going to portray her as being a badass. Mm-hmm. A some warrior. People, some, some people aren't excited by that, though. They, oh, you know, I well, think you got to, I mean, I subscribe to that you got to have both aspects. Yes. You know, she needs to be a badass when she needs to be a badass. And she, but she also, I like the diplomat um, the, also. The warrior for peace. Yeah. That, that's kind of how I encapsulate her. She's well, the warrior for peace. So, so like I said, I'm real curious to see what this guy, like I said, who's known for this kind of, you know, gritty, because I don't ever see Wonder Woman as being that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She doesn't strike me as being <laughs> ever being a street level. Well, she's not Batman, right? And she shouldn't be, well, or any of that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, she's just not that kind of that street level kind of a person. So mm-hmm. I'll be really curious. Real curious. Okay. Uh, I, as am I. I, I I'm, I'm going to get it. Uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm not too excited about Cliff Chang being on the art, but you know, I'm not fam- that familiar with his work, so it'll, it, I'm sure it will grow on me. Uh, as many artists have done over the years, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm, and I love Wonder Woman, um, so I'll, I'll be getting that. Uh, so let's let's talk about Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. I have no interest in, in Aquaman. Oh, see, I now I, I didn't I didn't I didn't read um I didn't read Brightest Day, so maybe I'd be more excited if I am up by that. But so I this never I like him in a team. He's like Superman for me. I like him in a team. He's interesting in a team with other people and whatnot, but I can't envision a comic of just him. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's going to be him under the water. Yeah, but what? how much is there? There's X number of cities, unless they populate the ocean a whole heck of a lot more. There's only so many cities and so many people you can interact with under the water. Okay. No. I sure, but I uh, I think it just matters on what what kind of a uh, what kind of a uh, uh, focus you want to have on the character as opposed to the setting he's in. Yeah. So, but the, so the, setting is the setting is part of it. Well, uh, yeah, but just like just like you know, Metropolis is the setting for Superman to a large degree. Uh huh. So, I, I don't. Know, I, I guess I don't put a lot of stock in that because I, 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 one, I have faith in. Again, this is by Jeff Johns. He's writing it, and Ivan Rice is on the art. So, to me, I, I like Rice's work. He. Uh, he did he did uh, a portion of brightest day uh-huh. um and and you know, I, like you said he didn't read it but but i i read brightest day and loved that that series and it got me loving aquaman again which i never really did you know aquaman like you know he's okay in the team and all that and he has he, he sometimes he has these really great character moments when he's on the justice league team right um and uh but mostly you know i never i've never gotten any of the aquaman series i i've got a you know, i think i got that one special when he had that that one watery looking suit from what the late 80s early 90s yeah. something like that yeah right late 80s i think i have that and that's about it but i got really excited for this 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 title uh after reading brightest day so so i'm looking forward to it um we'll see how it actually turns out so, so you are getting that oh yeah i'll be i'll be i'll be trying that out okay. 
just just because of the two guys uh, that are on it. Sure, and sometimes and, and, that's all it takes as a creator. I, I hear you. Yeah, it could, I, Ivan Rice's work. Him and, and Ethan Van Skyver, I think, are two of the newer talents that the, that DC has. I love their work. So, uh-huh. uh, so uh, next is Flash by Brian. I'm gonna get this wrong. But, Bucci. Ah. Bucci Alto. Yeah. Bucci Bucci Yato. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Brian. Uh, and Francis Manipal. Uh huh. Flash number one. What do you think? Well. Whatever. I'm not a Flash fan. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't have much interest in Flash now. I may read Flashpoint and decide, ooh, I, you know, this is one of those characters that interests me a little bit, but not enough to read a title by him. Yeah. But I've never been interested in Speedsters. It's just one of those things that doesn't doesn't excite. Well, I read I read Flash coming out of Crisis with Wally as Flash, right? And that was pretty good. Uh, in fact, over the years, it became very good. Um you know, I stopped. I stopped reading it uh, after the first two years or so. Um, but as it went on, with uh, with again, Jeff Johns had a run on it. Mark, Mark Wade had a celebrated run on it. Yeah. Um, apparently, it was really, really good. And then they they messed things up in more recent years. But but then I, I you know I got Flash Rebirth right. because Johns was writing it, and mm-hmm. I was interested to see what they were doing with that. I think Ethan Van Skyver was in the art on, on that again too. Um, but then they announced the the new Flash ongoing. Uh, with with Johns and Manipal on the right. art, and I don't like Manipal, so uh, that's that's not a and so I, right now. Plus, I'm not a big Barry Allen fan. I actually came to love Wally West as Flash, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and you know, and he was in the Justice League cartoon uh, as well. And so, right. to to me, this is one of those examples where it's like the sidekick, you know, takes on the role of of the original hero, and he does an excellent job at it. I don't want to see Barry Allen. I don't care about Barry Allen. <laughs> Too bad. I know. Here he is, <laughs> and 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 the whole the, from Fla- Flash Rebirth onto onto the his own series, which I got the first six six issues of, mm-hmm. and I was done. Um, you know, I'm getting Flashpoint just because it's an event book. If 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 that was just part of the Flash story, no way. I would I would not well, be guaranteed. Reading. I wouldn't get it. Yeah. So I, I have no interest in this in this whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, next. Plus, week, hey, it's one of your favorite subjects. It's a um, artist turned writer. Because Manpole's writing it too. Oh, is he's he? Sharing, he's sharing writing duties. He's sharing writing duties with um, Brian. Oh, okay. That'll be interesting. <laughs> well, it says right here. It says it says sharing both scripting and art duties with Brian. Ha, hmm. Does that mean the two of them are drawing it? And I mean, you see the inker or something? I yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, you know, it's it's kind of like the Titan, the New Teen Titans back in uh, the '80s, right? Because Marv and and George became co-plotters. Right. Co-plotters. And George was doing the art, I guess. Yeah. So that makes a certain amount of sense. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think that I think it does. Uh, sure. I'm just not. You know, I don't know Manipal's writing. Uh, well, and maybe. and like I said, I don't care for his art. So sure. There not, you go. Not for me. Yep. Uh, okay, so we have the Fury of Firestorm with Ethan Van Skyver and Gail Simone writing it. Skyver writing it yep. <laughs> with Gail Simone yep. and an artist uh, Yildere Sinar who was on was it Legion is on Legion yes right yes now? yeah and also and also um, did the backstories in the Titans Ravager oh okay I'm getting this no, no doubt about it well I'm, I'm, first first and foremost I'll get it because it's something that Gail's doing. And I'll pick up about anything of hers and give it a try. Yeah. Um, I love Firestorm. I've collected Firestorm a number of times over the years. It was the one thing that almost had me get Brian to stay was the fact that I, when I found out that Firestorm was going to be in it. Um, I'll be curious to see how they change these characters because they obviously are giving them a, a different uh, approach by putting them back in high school. The, um, the two of them, yeah. Right. Uh, Jason and Jen Ronnie. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that'll that'll be interesting. Uh, I, you know, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know what they've done with the character. I don't know how much, I mean, how much this changes the character. I don't know what they were like in Friday's Day. I liked Jason as Firestorm mm-hmm. uh, during the, during that run. I got that that, that whole run I had a you know, heck of a time with that. Um, right. I remember you talking about that. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm I'm almost always sold on on anything by Gale. You know, to start out with, I'll give it a shot unless it goes off someplace that I'm really interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I love I love the artist. I don't know that I was super excited with the um, the Legion title that he's been on. No, um, but I just haven't been excited by that in general. 
I really liked his um, I really liked his work on the Ravager backups and the stuff that he does just at his own personal warm up practice stuff that he posts on Twitter all the time and whatnot. Just awesome stuff. So I'm I'm excited for this comic on a number of levels. Mm-hmm. I mean I don't really know um, Van Shriver that much, um, and of course this is another another um artist right who's going to take a shot at writing so. yeah but i was curious like yesterday or the day before yesterday gail said that she doesn't co-write anything so i'm real curious to see how their writing duties work in that how, how that's going to work out. Mm-hmm. she says she's too much of a control freak so <laughs> i'm not sure exactly how that's working you know and that I'm, does not surprise me and i'm curious if this is the thing because gail for year plus has been talking about how she's got some secret thing that she's doing with him. And I'm wondering if this is it oh. or something else out there. I'm, I bet you this is it. Well, then, then that says that they had planned a Firestorm comic book of some sort or another for quite some time. No, well, maybe maybe not. Maybe you're right. Because there was some news that I just read today about uh, – I can't remember his name now. And I, I closed that article because I didn't think I, we were going to talk about it. But um, – <laughs> uh, the person that was initially, or he talked about it. The the I don't know if he was the writer or the artist now. Sorry, uh, but he he was the one that was going to do the new Firestorm book. Oh, 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 all right, the guy who does um, Atomic Robot. Yeah. yeah, 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 him. Well, yeah, that's that. Well, if we want to get into rumor talking. There's a whole can, other can of worms around some of the creators who thought they were doing something and now suddenly aren't doing something. Right. That's right. all kind of interesting. I'm just curious as to what kind of bridges have been burned. <laughs> Exactly, because apparently DC asked various um, people to pitch for various books, and after they already had somebody else working on it, perhaps yeah, or 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 the person that pitched it, they were led to believe that or it was theirs, that it was theirs, or they were told to some degree. I don't, I yeah, it's all it's all speculation at this point. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I, apparently Gail Simone tweeted to uh, that person whose name I oh, do not know. I remember his name right hand. Yeah. Um, oh, oops, you were the person. I saw that. Oh, oops, you were the person that was on it, man. You would have been good. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> and then then she was like, everybody read Atomic Robot. Right. Right. <laughs> Which is a fun comic. So yeah, that's that. would be unfortunate if if the way that DC editorial did this does burn some bridges there, because that yeah. that was a, that that would be a crappy thing to do. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I don't know. I don't know how that really all is playing out, but because there are other creators that you know, like you know, supposedly at one point um, Brian Wood Wood was going to be on um, Supergirl. Oh right. Mm-hmm. And now supposedly he's not. Yep. Of course, we haven't seen anything official anywhere. But he um. He tweeted a picture of his daughter wearing a pink Supergirl shirt. She's, of course, it's adult size, so she's wearing it as a dress because his daughter's not very big. And <laughs> he made the comment, do I have to give the shirt back now? And that's the thing <laughs> I've seen him ever say about that he was going to write it or that he wasn't going to write it. or that Oh, whatever. see, that sounds like... that. And then um, I, I didn't see the original tweet from... Um, uh, Jason Aaron from Marvel and Vertigo, but he said something to Brian, I guess. And but Brian's reply back to him was something along the lines of, you know, that's okay. Wait until you see my next creator owned book. So I don't know. Okay. You know, so yeah, I don't know how that all works out. Hopefully there's no, you know, nobody was thrown under a bus somewhere. But, yeah. It yeah. sounds, sounds like there's some hurt, hurt feelings at the very least there. Well, it's, that's the internet for you too. When we can follow all of these people and whatnot, which you know you couldn't do a long time ago, and it gives us a lot more information, yeah, yeah. maybe than what we should even have. That's so. probably true. You, you, sometimes you don't want to see what what uh, what's how things are being uh, made in the kitchen, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm curious, you know, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you because know, exactly. I don't want you know. I mean, I don't want to end up wrecking a comic for me knowing that. Somebody got screwed out of something, even though I might like the comic. Yeah, I don't want that to become part of what I'm reading into whatever I'm reading. So yeah, so yeah. I, uh, back to Firestorm, though. Uh, I agree. With, I'm going to get that one too. I'm going to try it out at least because mostly because again, a brightest day is. But I know I know things are are changed, but I got interested in the character again, especially the pairing of of Jason and um, and Ronnie together. So I, I like that what they were doing with them in Brightest Day. So I'm I'm curious what they're going to do here. Uh, in this new title, and I, I've I've always, I've always liked Firestorm in general. Yeah. You know, I got the title back in the 
the early 80s when it was out. Right. So. Right. Um, next, we've got uh, The Savage Hawkman by Tony Daniel and Philip Tan. <laughs> yeah. No interest in that either. <laughs> really? Because I don't have an interest in the character. Oh, um, uh, see? Think- this is – Hawkman has always been one of those characters that I love even though I don't know why I do. I just I just like the idea of Hawkman. Uh-huh. And like I said, he's okay on a team. He amuses me on a team, but with all of his rage and whatnot, I just, Well, uh, yeah, if they if if the writer if the writer isn't up to it and and that's where they go is like, well, he's just the angry fighter guy, you right. know, that's not interesting. Yeah. But um, the the run that again Jeff Johns did this back when they uh, this is a few years ago now when when he had his his title before um, I got the the first what three trades of that yeah and I enjoyed it quite a bit you know it wasn't it, he I mean there was the part where he was the savage guy kind of guy but um, there was a lot more character development in there so you know it, it became he became a really interesting character who who you know his really his <laughs> His, his his super heroic identity is really lame. You know, he he flies because he has this contraption and he has a bunch of old weapons. But it mm-hmm. but he's badass, man. He right. Fought, you know, when he has when he has that mace and he's hitting people, I love it. That's so. him just being angry and smashing things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> which which I, which is cool, but I don't have I, I don't have, I don't have an interest in it. Yeah. Um, and the creators that are on it, Tony Daniel, I've enjoyed mm-hmm. his Batman that he's been doing. But I enjoy him being both the writer and the artist on it. Um, oh, that, yeah, that's too bad they're not doing that. Um, and um, Philip Tan, man, does some incredible work on like a single page or like a cover or that sort of thing. I was never very excited by his his work in um, um, The Outsiders. Or maybe it was that his work wasn't so super stellar that it drowned out just how bad Dan DiDio's writing was. I don't, <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know which, I don't know which it was. So, you know, I, like I said, I don't, I don't have an interest in that title and the creators that are on it aren't a big enough draw for me at this point. For me yeah. Draw. I, I, I agree. The uh, Philip Tan art, especially I, I've never been a big fan of his. So, yeah. and this, this cover image is just really does nothing for me. There's not, I mean, he, he does, he does feathers nice on the cover. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I like that, but, Otherwise, yeah, I I I'll probably get number one just to see because I like Hawkman, but I I don't see my I don't see me uh, continuing to get that title at all. Uh huh. All right, here here's your here's one of your favorites, Green Arrow. Yep. By yeah, J T Kroll and Dan Jurgens. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited about this. I'm I'm, I you know I the current run of Green Arrow's been really hit and miss for me mostly due to the frustration because so much of it's been tied up and you know quasi brightest day stuff it just doesn't feel like it's taking ollie way too long you know to get out of his own self-wallowing in that crazy forest to actually go about being a hero so i'm hoping with this relaunch that we can get him back into actually i don't know fighting crime and 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 that sort of thing um i I think JT Kroll understands the character well enough to write him well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm happy with Dan Jurgens' artwork. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. Curious yeah. to see if the cover is, is, um, Brett Booth and not, you know, Dan, but whatever. It, that, that's what it is, right? Cause the cover is done by Booth, but, yeah. but Jurgens is actually doing the art on, doing, he's Arrow? actually doing, he's actually doing the art, the interior art. Okay. That doesn't that seem like a weird combination to you? Why? Or not not combination, but that but Jurgen's doing Green Arrow. He, I mean, he's never been really associated with that character, right? But but I thought that's what part of the things what they were going to do is change up some of this stuff. Well, yeah, true. I don't, I don't know. I, just, I guess I guess we'll see. It to me, it doesn't strike me as weird. Okay. But um, I mean, actually, coupled with the next title you're going to talk about, seems interesting to me. I would think that because in the next title, um, Justice League International. He's the writer. Uh-huh. Dan Jurgens is. Uh-huh. So why wouldn't he just write and draw one title as opposed to having art duties on one title and then writing on another title? Mm-hmm. It seems seems interesting and strange to me. Yeah. I think you just have him do all of one. Yeah, I agree. Or or maybe that uh, you know they have him doing the team book because it's got Booster in it. And most people feel like he's the best 
one of the better booster riders, but because it's a team book and it has so many more people to draw, he can't keep up with with a team book because I'm, I'm sure it's got to be harder to keep up with when you have to you know, draw multiple characters all the time. Mm-hmm. So, but they wanted to give him something else to do, so they gave him something else to draw. I don't know. I mean, that's inter- It's an interesting. I mean, that, from that perspective, it's interesting. But it's, well, see, that, that's why I think I was. I think I was where I was going with this because yeah. uh, with his popularity with the Booster Gold title and his association with that more recently, it right. makes kind of sense that he's doing this JLI title. Uh-huh. Um, well, but, I'm curious to see if Booster Gold ends up with a his own title. As well? Yeah. yeah I, I don't know what the sales are like and whatnot for that. but I doubt it, but you know, who knows? Because they can have him here and he can fulfill his role in, yeah. in, in this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so, but yeah, so so Dan, so Dan Jurgens being on JLI w- with Booster Gold in there it seems uh, to make a certain amount of sense. But yeah, I saw the Green Arrow. I'm like, I don't, I don't get that. But uh, it's not, it's not like I don't, I don't like Dan. It's not that I do not like Jan, Dan right, Jurgens' art. Just, I like why, it. But why they make, why they make the, the editorial decision to put him there? May yeah. or maybe maybe he petitioned for it. Maybe he, he maybe Green Arrow is a character he's always wanted to do and he's just never been allowed to until now. There you go. It'd be yeah. nice to find that out, wouldn't it? Yep. All right, since we already talked about JLI, let's go there next. We got uh, Dan Jurgens and Aaron Lepresti. Yep, I'll be getting that. Yeah. I. You know what? I'm torn about this one. I, I'm, I'm still kicking myself that I didn't pick up the the you know, the Max series when it was out because it sounds like it was a real hoop by the oh, time it was said and done. The Generation Lost? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I'm probably going to pick that back up in trades. Yeah, I, I, was, um, I was planning on that, definitely. I'm, I, I guess let me put it this way. I'm, I'm curious. I will be getting this because I'm curious about it. Well, I like Aaron's artwork. Um, I, I, I've always thought Dan was fine. I don't know who all of these people are that are on this cover. Please. I was going to ask. So we have Batman, a, a Batman. I don't know if that's well, it Bruce like Wayne. The same costume, so. It does. So he's going to be on both teams? Well, I don't know. If you go by the room, If you go by the rumor mill thing... If Dick's going back to being Nightwing, mm-hmm. well, who's the other Batman then? Or is there going to be another Batman? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, sure, he could easily be on both teams. Batman's in a lot of places. Well, I fun. know, I know, but it's just it's just one of those weird things. Like, why why would Batman do that? But and my that's... assumption, and my assumption would also be is is that you're not going to have just like with the Justice League, you're not going to have all these characters in the same place all the time, are you? I would hope not. So, okay, so anyway, so Batman, notice yep. Mr. Gold's got a new costume, right? Yeah, mm-hmm, which looks okay. fine, sure. You have red, uh, Rocket Red in the background there, That's Fire. Better. Okay. Fire and Ice, you got you to gotta have those, cause, and, and Guy Gardner, because right. that was part of the original JLI stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, what's her name, Mary? Vixen. Vixen, thank you. Yep, they got a new uh, costume for her. She doesn't have the plunge neckline. Oh, good, yeah. I like that costume design so far, or what I can see of it. Uh-huh. And then, so then you got these other two in the corners here. The one in the top right, I have no idea who that is. That, Do you? The, um, the scaly... Creature from the Black Lagoon with thing. the pitchfork? Yeah, exactly. I don't know who that is. I, yeah, who the heck? Yeah. And then and then the bottom left, that looks like Who's Donna that? Troy, doesn't it? Is it Donna Troy? I, is... Or is it somebody's less Asian version of um, Cassandra Cain? Oh, hadn't considered that. Or as somebody said, hey, it looks like she's wearing Jubilee's costume from Marvel. Is it really? I, it does look. It does look a lot like. I don't. I, all I remember. Well, if it's was Don Troy, I'm happy that she's not wearing that huge plungy neckline thing. But you know, I kind of like the stars. I do too. But this costume is fine. Uh, if that is indeed Donna Troy, if, I, mean, I don't know. If it's Donna Troy, that it, seems like a that seems like a strange pose for Donna Troy. Yeah. How often does Donna Troy go? Do you, do you have any pictures have you ever seen of her no. kicking like that? That's like a martial art kind of thing. She would be flying and punching your face, right? That's Don Troy, isn't would, it? Would, would, could this be Black Canary? Oh, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Without the blonde? I'd be okay with that. I mean, black costume yellow, with yellow. Sure. Uh, the, the, like you say, the martial arts kind of pose. I can't imagine. She's been a blonde for so long now. I can't imagine that I go back to be. Uh, yeah, I, I that would, that would seem dad. ridiculous. But that totally takes it. completely would take away her character recognition whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I doubt. I doubt that's that's Black Canary. But I, I when I when I first saw this image, I thought that's Donna. But I don't really understand what they're doing with her here. But yeah. we'll see. 
Well, I, you know, that's that's what I'm curious about. Who is that? I mean, I, I can't find anybody else who will commit to who they think that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'll probably pick up this issue at least just to see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Now, now that I'm talking through these, I'm I'm picking up more than I thought I was going to. <laughs> yeah, see, you're picking up every one so far. Oh, you're not picking up, you're not picking up the Flash. No. Or, or Green Arrow. I won't pick that one up either. Loser. <laughs> I, you know, you could just tell me how good it is. You're right. I will. <laughs> I like the new costume. The Green Arrow. Green Arrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure why he's shooting a compound bow. Real men shoot oh, yeah. long bows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> makes sense. It makes sense from a, from a mechanical and physics standpoint. Yeah. To shoot a compound bow. Yeah. Yes, it does. I, I yeah I like it too. It looks really cool. And he has a trick arrow. He shoots a trick arrow. Does he not shoot trick arrows right now in the current? <laughs> He does not. Okay. He shoots sharp, pointy sticks, a la Longbow Mike Grell. Oh, so we're back to that, huh? Well, yeah, that's always been one of the things. He hasn't been so hardcore because he hasn't really dealt with any just general rift draft. He's too busy playing in the trees. Oh, I see. So it's not like he shot up too many people, you know. Hasn't stuck too many arrows through people's pant legs and ear lobes and whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and we talked already talked about Mr. Terrific. Is there anything else you want to? I don't know if I should be getting that comic book or not. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I, I'm, I'm somewhat interested. It, it, it could be an interesting comic. I think. Um, the character is an interesting character. Him him carrying his own. Hmm. I don't know. You know. I mean, I don't know. You know, uses his brains and fists against science gone mad. Well, that sounds kind of interesting. That's kind yeah. of up, that's kind of up my line. But I don't know because I don't. Do you see what I'm saying? It's one of those ones I'd like to give a shot to, but mm-hmm. I only got so much money. Right. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of right now, I'm waiting. It's one of those wait and see what else comes out. If they if they get rid of a bunch of the titles that I'm currently reading, and you know, this might be one of the ones that replaces that. I, I just need to wait and see what else is coming out, I guess, before I'm going to, you know, that's not a yes for sure I'm getting it, but I'm curious about it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, see, I've never been that big of a, Mr. Terrific fan. He, even when I read JSA, uh-huh. he's he's an okay character. I, I don't mind him. Uh, right. But I, I think, but I think again, this goes more towards, hey, we need more diversity. So sure. who do we have? Oh, we have Mr. Terrific, and he he's a somewhat popular character in JSA. Let's give him his own title. Right, and he was like the leader for a while there, like when they had the JSA versus Cobra and stuff like that, I believe. And Checkmate, wasn't he part of Checkmate? Oh, I th- yeah, I think so. See, I, have, I, I want those are books I want to pick up at some point. I just haven't gotten around picking them up and trade. Oh, you mean after that was after the whole year, year, one year later thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I, he plays a he plays a I, I think he plays a a pretty significant role in that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so. The character has potential to be interesting, or not? So it just depends on what they, you know, what they do with him. But like I said, for me, it's kind of, kind of a wait and see. But I still think it's a, I, I, I still think he, it's almost a throwaway character. Oh look, diversity. Oh, he didn't make it. See, diverse characters don't make it in the universe. Well, that's because they didn't back him with anybody of significance. I mean, okay, I know that Eric Wallace writes um, Titans. I'm not familiar with anything else he's written. And Roger Robinson, what's he do? I have no idea. Yeah. I, I don't either. Not that, not that I know who everybody is, obviously, but that doesn't ring any kind of a bell. Who's doing the artwork for um, um, Batman Beyond? I have no idea. Is he is he doing the artwork for that? I don't know. Well, anyway, doesn't matter. Obviously, we're <laughs> we're not big fans. No. But like I said, I, for I, me, I, for me, it's going to come down to what else is out there. Yeah. It has enough interest to me that I'll pick it up if, say, three or four more of the titles that I have all disappear and nothing replaces it that interests me. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope it succeeds. You know, just because I'd like like I, I you know I'd like to see the, the more diverse titles and characters, right? Uh-huh. But this is just not a character that interests me. Yeah. Now, if if they would have made a cyborg series, I'd probably pick it up. Yeah. But not Mister Terrific. Sorry, Mister T. Jeez. <laughs> uh, J.T. Kroll and Freddie Williams the second on Cap- Captain Adam number one. I won't be getting that. No. Again, another character is like, I, I have no interest in this character whatsoever. Well, I have. He's somewhat interesting. I've picked up series that he's had in the past and whatnot. Um, I'm. 
I'm glad to get away from um, Freddie Williams II. Yeah. When they canceled when they canceled um, JSA All Stars, that was one of my biggest beasts with that comic. I've just never really been a fan of his art in that. You know, everybody's got way too squared off and strange looking jaws and whatnot. Just mm. not not a fan. Nice guy, nice guy and all. You know, but I'm just not a fan of his art style. Now I've seen him do other stuff. You know, he does commissions and whatnot that don't look anything like that. So I don't know if it was just the style he chose to work with in JSA All Stars, and that's my only exposure for for of of his. You know, I don't know if he's one of those artists that tries to change up what he's doing when he does something when he does a new title and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, not not. Yeah, I'm not going to get that because of that. And of course, the cover's by somebody else, and so I couldn't look at the cover and go, "Oh yeah, he's using the same style." I want nothing to do with it. But yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna miss on that one. It doesn't doesn't do anything for me. Yep. Okay. And then uh, finally, we have DC Universe presents. Oh yeah, so, I'll be getting that. Starting with uh, De- a Dead Man story by Paul Jenkins and Bernard Chang. Yeah. Uh, I'll I, be getting that. Yeah, I'm excited. I love anthology books. Same here. So. I, yeah, I'll be supporting this one definitely. You know, the anthology, the to kind of odd team up thing. That's why I've always been kind of a fan of like the Brave and the Bold and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that they're not going to stick with, you know, it'll be a, you know, a two or three issue arcs with those creators, and then they'll move on to somebody else. Mm-hmm. That means we might get some really interesting stories. And in that you know, you have these writers who go, "Hey, I've only got, you know, I, I want to tell this kind of story with this character." You know, they can pitch that, and there's a place for it. You know, the place for him to write all kinds of stuff. So, the uh, problem with that, though, is that uh, historically anthology titles just don't last very long. So I'm afraid we'll get we'll get a year, maybe two out of this, and they'll cancel it. Yeah. Because I, I don't, you know, I, it sounds like to me that you and I are the the minority in in our love for this kind of a format. Mm. Could be, I guess. So we'll enjoy it while it's there, and when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, yeah definitely. But it, it just, I just wish. I, I hope whoever they have, uh, I, well, I hope the Dead Man story first of all is is good enough that it brings people in. Well, I love that cover. Oh yeah, the cover looks great. Well, Ryan Sook, he does awesome stuff. Yeah, that I love. He's, go ahead. Would love to see more of his stuff. Of course, he's he's one of those people who doesn't. <laughs> him doing interiors is a struggle. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that cover, the way that the chains are coming in from oh, from yeah. off camera, so to speak, that just yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. But yeah. But then, you know, uh, so obviously that Dead Man story has to be really good to bring people in initially, and then whatever they follow up with, you know, the creative teams really have to bring their A game to keep people coming back. Sure. Yes and no, but but being the type of book it is, you don't have to pick up every issue. If it's a character you're interested in or creators you're interested in, you pick it up. If it's not, you don't, right? Well, true, but if people aren't picking it up. But then I guess is that what makes it not succeed? I think so, in part at least. I mean, you're not getting the sales month to month. Yeah. So and and if you don't get the especially at the beginning if you don't get the sales month to month for the least at least the first six months to a year, you know the likelihood of that being that, that continuing yeah. is probably not very not very good. So yeah, you're probably right. But the, I guess for me as a consumer, that's one of the reasons why I like it is is that I can make a decision. I haven't missed a story. I mean, I missed a story, but I haven't missed some piece of the serialized part of the, these of these well these comics represent. You know, I, I don't. You know, if I decide I don't want that arc or whatever it's not that big a deal you know because it doesn't it's not adding it's not adding anything to the characters in the same way like if i decided i didn't want to pick up three or four issues of you know green arrow something that's pertinent to that character's existence from this point forward may have happened during that time and i missed it if i didn't pick it up but usually these anthology kind of things don't you know they're not they're not altering the character in such extreme ways Mm-hmm. So, so there's the only ten we know about for sure. Well, eleven. Eleven. Right. Well, plus the plus the um, you want to talk about the lantern titles? Yeah, let's let's do that real quick. Um, Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps, New Guardians, and Red Lanterns. So obviously, I will get Green Lantern because Jeff Johns is still writing that, and I think Doug Monkey is is doing the art still. But anyway, I, I I've loved what they've been doing on that, so I'll be getting that for sure. But not so much the core and the new guardians. Uh, I, I, I don't get I don't get Green Lantern core and I don't get Green Lantern Emerald Warrior uh, right now. So and it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter to me who's on the books. It just I, all I need is one Green Lantern title. Yeah. 
But but the Red Lanterns title with Ugh. with Peter Milligan writing. Yes. Oh yeah. See, uh, I don't collect. I don't collect any Green Lantern. It's just one of those characters and concept. It's like you know whatever. I'm, I'm fine with him being in the teams and stuff. And obviously, I've enjoyed in the past. Um, you know, like Hal and Ollie teaming up back in the day when they used to do that and stuff. And you know, they amuse me, but. I'm not a big Guardian fan, but I may have to pick up the Red Lantern just because Milligan's right, and just to see what he does with a "quote unquote" closer to a superhero title. Mm -hmm. So, and hopefully Ed Bendis is um, healthy now, so he can actually actually do the um, the comic book. You know, because yeah. he started out on Birds of Prey, and then he had some health issues that took him off of it. So. Yeah, if he yeah if he can do that on a regular basis, yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be fun to read. Yeah. And and actually the the Red Lantern bit of um, Brightest Day and and also you know somewhat in Blackest Night, but also the the main Green Lantern title. Um, there's mm -hmm. there's a character called Atrocitus, who right. is who is the main Red Lantern, right? And his right. his. Uh, his story is is somewhat interesting. You know, he's not just it, it's, it's kind of like going back to Hawkman. You know, that whole rage thing, and so right. that's what powers the Red Lanterns is is their rage about whatever. You know, and they spit out this this uh, red plasma that burns through anything, and and uh, but it, but it's it the Red Lantern part of that whole um, Rainbow Lantern thing that they've been doing uh -huh. has been one of the more interesting bits of it. So I'm 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 looking forward to this. And like we say, uh, with Peter Milligan on, it's like well, I got to see what he's going to do with this because he's such a good writer. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, you know, I don't know. It's one of those, that's the Red Lanterns. That's one of those ones that's on my potential could be list because of who's writing it. Less so about the actual characters there. You know, I, I think Milligan will make me interested in the character. But it also depends on what else comes out. You know, when, when they tell us what these other titles, the rest of the 52 titles are going to be, you know, um, you know, we'll make, we'll decide for sure exactly what my, my pocketbook can, you know, can handle in comparison to what is, you know, what all is out there. So it'll be, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm really curious to see what comes out when, like I said, and I, you know, this whole relaunch thing, I, I, I live in fear for some of the books. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I, Live in fear that Secret Six is done. That'll yeah, me out. we've not heard anything about that title, have we? Nope. Again, Gail is just incredibly tight-lived. I mean, doesn't even she won't even say she won't even say sorry. I can't tell you. You know, she's just not. There. <laughs> Which is smart of her, right? yes. and that keeps you from accidentally saying something you're not supposed to. Right. But part of me wonders now is, uh, you know, oh, maybe that's why they're playing the whole get out of card, get out of hell free card. You know that. Man, no, she's always intent on writing the second part to that whole thing. You know, what are, now you've got the car, what are you going to do with it? Oh, but maybe not now. And then, and there's going to be this big change with Bane because, of course, Bane's going to be in the next movie. So they need to move Bane, the Bane character, back to being. Oh, jeez. Back to being the um, um. Not try to be the a good. I mean, as much as he can be a good righteous person, and when this is all said and done, he'll be judged on his deeds, and he'll come out okay at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, now he's been to hell. It, you get the impression now that he's been there. It's like, well, screw it. I'm going here anyway. I've had the completely the wrong perspective on all of this. This is how I'm going to go back to being. You know, he's going to go back to being that driven, let's destroy these people kind of a thing, as opposed to, you know, this is my family and I'm just going to go with them and we're going to work whatever jobs we can and I have certain principles I'm not going to break. Oh, that's you know. unfortunate. Because well, I've, I've really enjoyed Bane, especially in... in oh, in the secret six uh, issues that I've, I've read. Sure. Sure. I'm by wonder. I don't know for sure if that's what it is, but part of me wonders, I know that character is moving that direction. I know the character is moving that direction because where he doesn't have to be obviously exactly like the movie, because the movie, and the comic books are two different things. Right. But I think he's going to be moving toward, he's going to be a go back to being a significant player, you know, cause he was a significant player. I mean, he really, you know, obviously he broke the bat, you know, he was a, he was a significant player and then he kind of became this, you know, grade B, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and now they're going to move him back to being more along the lines of that single player. They kind of hinted at that. No, I was one of the things that kind of surprised me um, out of all the news that came out of the Emerald City Comic Con that nobody talked about with the fact is, is that that Harris said there that Bane was going to go back to being a more significant player. 
you know, he did say that. Nobody reported on that. I was kind of surprised. And of yeah, course, I think you're I right, though. Bummed, I was being a bum at the time and never got around to writing my own report on him at City Comic Con. <laughs> so I didn't mention it either. So, but, so it makes me wonder. You know, they they gave they told Gail, okay, at this point, this is done. So now she's going to squeeze out the stuff she really wanted to say beforehand. And I think I'll be really unfortunate because, I, like I said, it's one of my favorite comic books. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm worried that, you know, the rumor has it that Barbara Gordon is going to go back to being Batgirl. That sucks. Right, right. I like the character Barbara Gordon, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Even if they choose to suddenly make her walk again, which at this point I think is not a good thing to do. I, I think it's healthy to have her being a diverse character by being stuck in a wheelchair. But beyond that, um, I think it's silly for her to go back to being Batgirl unless they're going to de-age her a whole bunch too. Well, there's, if they're doing it with the adult others. She's woman and should not be running around being called Batgirl anymore. That's <laughs> just part of my opinion. This seems silly to me in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Plus the fact is, is that if they want comics to appeal to a younger, newer crowd, it's crazy to have them to pull you know, Brian Miller off of that comic. I agree. And And – you know, I can't I can't imagine what they're thinking, and especially in terms to the, with the Batgirl comic with Brian Miller on here. It's been it, it's been such a fun, fun comic. The only problem with that comic is, is who is Batgirl? Why is she Batgirl? And all that stuff is all tied into a lot of old trappings that it sounds yeah. to me like they're going to. You know, that Get aren't going to be part of the relaunch. That's yeah. what makes that a mess. Yeah, yeah you're right. But. It's 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 really unfortunate that 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 they're they're going that route I think and and this 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 from a guy who remember when uh, when they were soliciting the, this new Batgirl title and they were teasing giving us teaser images of uh-huh. you know, who's who's wearing the costume and stuff and at, at one point I thought you know it'd be it'd be kind of cool if actually Barbara Gordon came back as right. Batgirl right. and and then I you know I finally I finally read. The, the comic and it's like oh my god this is this is exactly the kind of comic the kind of Batgirl comic they should do yeah. we, we don't need to go back to the past and, and bring in the old the old character who used to be this this person um, what Brian Q Miller has done with this title has just been phenomenal well without doubt so and then so they so you have the the Batgirl thing uh, I, I'm sure with Batgirl you know like you know they're 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 making the the characters younger across the board so that uh, may, maybe they bring in or they they tie in the whole Barbara was in a wheelchair for a while but she got better but you know but she's still she's still younger and so she's going to be Batgirl again um, and then you have Nightwing of course uh, Birds of Prey what have we heard about Birds of Prey and that um. Uh, CBR reports that there will be a Birds of Prey, but it will have no Gale on it. Gale will not be writing it. Again, very unfortunate. Yeah. And they now, just they just got Issa like, Saiz on art on that. Yeah, I know. That sucks, too. Because oh. it's such a gorgeous comic now. Uh, now, I liked um, Tony Bedard. He's the one that was writing it when it finished, when they shut it down during the whole Batman died and rebooted all of the supposed quote-unquote Bat titles. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't agree that that's a bad title, but um, <laughs> I, I, I was enjoying his run on it. I, I was enjoying that. You know, didn't have quite the um, the richness in um, character and how much each of those women get each other and love each other, but it was still a really enjoyable comic. Yeah, they were still all really, you know, strong female characters. Um, you know, doing the same stuff that guys do and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. so I mean, it wasn't. You know, it didn't pander to anything and didn't make a mess of anything. So I may still get that comic, you know, if it actually does show back up again, which I, who, you know, who knows whether or not it really will, because of course that's just, you know, rumors. And, you know, who's on it? It'll all, you know, I figure I'll pick it up because I like those characters and I like those characters together. Plus, the fact there's some of those characters, I just don't see how you're going to see them anyplace else if, you're not, if they're not there. You know? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, for me it goes back to who's on it and and I guess kind of where they're going with the title. I'm sure Dove won't be in it anymore. So you don't yeah, know I, I know. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea. I mean, well, I, you know, what? Because I don't know what they did with that character after the whole um, Brian Stay thing. Well, her appearance in, in Birds of Prey and her involvement in Brian Stay are totally separate things. Well, right. So Even yeah, I put that damn title on the. Birds of Prey comic. 
<laughs> yeah. I was to try and generate more sales, but I, I, well, you know, but but it, it doesn't hurt that they're trying to generate more sales for sure. Birds of Prey. For sure, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a it was a title <laughs> deserving of attention. So, but but we know that by what June thirteenth or something like that, we're supposed to know. We should know what all of all the titles are. Supposedly, yes. June thirteenth, they'll get they'll release the well the, the electronic. The guy they got to tell us by then, Colonel. Nobody knows what to order. Oh right, because yeah, right. they have to make all the advanced orders and whatnot. So we have to know by then. Mm-hmm. But but I'm curious if they're actually going to uh, solicit all fifty two issues for September, or if or if we're just going to get a majority of them. Um, didn't it say September? I'm looking back over. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. I, I just, I'm looking back over articles really quickly here to see if I can find where. Um, I, yeah, all this information has has kind of blended in. Right. And and I I, I don't remember what actually has been uh, uh, officially announced as opposed to what's rumor. <laughs> oh, oh, it says here in the U.S. Today. Uh, let's see. This is a little blurb from the source. USA Today has an exclusive first interview about the decision to launch 52 first issues over a five-week period. Oh, okay. There you go. The design of more than 50 new costumes and what it all means for the world's greatest superhero. So, so five, they are all going to come out at once. So five weeks includes that that last week in August where Justice League right. comes out. And so, so yeah. they're all going to come. Well, they still have to solicit them. They all come out in the, yep. they all come out in the same month. So yep. we're going to have to know what they all are by the 13th. Okay. Well, there you go. Because that five weeks, that's going to be... That's going to be the first week of August, and then the four weeks that are in September, right? Yep, I, I would, I would have to, yeah, it would have to be that. So yeah, that's going to be, um, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, we should, we so, should, we should get. So together. do you think, do you think things being numbered number one draws more people in to buy a comic? It does. It, it simply does. It, it, yeah. Does it draw you into buy a comic because it's no. it says number one? No, but. But in general, that's, it does. But that's because you've got a longer. I mean, the only thing that the only thing that number one tells me is is that it's potentially a new comic, and I'm at least gonna. I mean, I'm gonna buy it, but I'm at least gonna look at it to see what it is, because maybe it's something that I might be interested in. Mm-hmm. But I don't buy a comic at number one thinking, oh, if I read it at number one, I'm gonna understand what's going on, and if I read it at 300, I'm not gonna know what's going see, on. See now, okay, here's... is that because I'm a veteran comic book writer, or I'm just not afraid of the fact that I may not know everything about a comic? I mean, I had. Most of my family reads, reads com, you know, reads the comics that I get. And if it's something that new that they haven't read before, I generally just hand to them and go, you know, read this, accept what it's telling you here. If there is some real significant piece of background that you need to know to understand the story, I'll let you know. But most of the time, there really isn't. If you just accept what's being told to you and read it and go along for the ride, you're going to be okay. So why are we renumbering that, you know, some of those comics? seems crazy well uh, other than the so the obvious answer to that is people it's, buy number n- it's number one where, where they're trying to get uh new and younger readers on board so here's a good starting point for you but as opposed to number ones i yeah i think you're right <laughs> 52 number 50, one 52 that's you know that's 150 some bucks for someone to plunk down if they really want to catch everything yeah i one, and that's one, only that's if you only read DC titles. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't collect tons and tons of other titles. I mean, I do, but I'm certainly not going to. Well, this month I'm not buying those. You know, I'm more interested. I've got all these... I'm more interested now in 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 months months two and three, right? So how how is this 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 new thing that DC is doing? How is that going to affect? <laughs> things two or three months from now oh for sure because you know they'll get a, they'll get that initial sales bump oh yeah ones because there are people who are gonna break out the credit cards and go in debt to buy <laughs> to buy every single number one yeah um but yeah how is it gonna long term how, how is it what's it really gonna be but you know uh that whole you you mentioned before about you know jumping in into a comic and just uh-huh. kind of going with it and so uh, you know i don't know anybody personally and and I don't. There's not actually a lot of people I talk to about comics that I know personally. You know, you you, you being the major one. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't know anybody personally who who thinks that that coming into a comic that's numbered, you know, in sixty or even six hundred is an issue. Yeah. You you just you you buy a comic because you like for, primarily. I would I would assume you like that character. Right, or, well, something, or, or about, you, something about the book appealed to you. Yeah, some, something either the writer, right. the artist, or both, or the character, right. or the, the publisher, even, you know, whatever. You, you don't you don't buy any action comics now be, because 
or, or let me rephrase that. You, I don't think people who buy Action Comics are concerned about the fact that it's over 900 issues now. Right. There's no way. Nobody can go back and get issue one of Action Comics and work their way through to up to 900 nowadays. It's just not feasible. So I, I don't understand the, the, the criticism by some people that I've read online that they – that they can't get into uh, these, some of these long-running titles because they're long-running. That you think, a, you, you think you got to go back and collect every issue? That, well, I mean, that's just, that's is, yeah. is, is do, you, do you think that's what it is? Is these people who they have they have this huge collector mentality that they have to have all of them, and so there's like, well, I don't even want to bother now. Or, or they think they're going to be uninformed if they don't read the whole thing. Ooh, well, okay, I, you yeah. know, I got to tell you, if I had to go back and read every Batman title to be informed on Batman, how could you keep it all straight and remember it all? Uh, you'd short, have be, of, short of having eidetic memory. Well, There's no or, way. Or be Grant Morrison. But yeah. Oh, come on, even he is. <laughs> no, I think if anybody could do it, he could. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he spent, yeah. But but still, it's just, but that's just, yeah, I, I, I don't know, that's. That, that's kind of crazy. But I, that has to be the – I don't know because I don't know anybody that's that way either. Because I, I guess I don't know any new – I don't know any new comic book fans. I don't know anybody new who's just going in to start reading comics um, hmm. because I don't I don't hang out at the local comic book store. It's not like I happen to be there and somebody walks in and goes – and I hear them talking about, oh, I don't – you know, I've never collected comics, but I'm interested in collecting comics. What should I be reading? Mm. I'm, I'm always one if I'm staying in a store and that kind of thing happens to open my mouth, <laughs> yeah. you know, to give my opinion, yeah. you know, because I appreciate it if if I was the person standing there going, I'm not sure what's there to hear other fans' opinions on what might be interesting or not interesting and, and and why, but because I'm not exposed to those new people, and is that the problem? There aren't any new people. Well, you know? I don't think that's true, but but right. I think the numbers are really small. I, when I go into the comic shop in Spokane. Um, you know, I'm standing there looking at stuff, or or I'm talking to to the guys that, that work there. You know, I I, mm-hmm. I, I do notice the the people who come in. Now, part of this is the part of what I see at this comic shop is because of that particular comic shop. Um, other comic shops may have a different a different uh, clientele, but you know, I'm seeing people younger than myself, mm-hmm. uh, mostly men, of course. But I see a lot of women come in and buy comics, and not just you know like the Vertigo stuff or um, right. or indie stuff. It's they're, they're actually buying superhero stuff. I, I do good. see that. That's good. So, so yeah, that is good. Um, right, right. Well, I just wonder on the, on the digital comic thing, um, how many people will go to that? I mean, I think the people who are collecting comics now will probably just keep collecting comics the same habits that they have. Yeah. Um, maybe a few more will go to digital because they can get it the same day. But I wonder how many how many customers will start reading comic books that they wouldn't, didn't read comic books before because of the digital. They would have never went and bought a comic book. I mean, because, you know, they buy everything else online, you know, their music and stuff. They don't ever go into a music store, would never go into a music store, but they buy it online. And yeah. now that's just one thing that they can consume online, like TV shows and everything else, that they're going to pick up a certain amount more of um, readership, you know, because of that. Well, I, I'm, I'm sure that's definitely their hope. Uh, but, but DC... I think especially really needs to they well not just DC I I, I think all all the companies that do this they need to do a better job of getting of advertising basically getting the word out there cross promoting saying you know bringing them into the digital stores that they have uh, otherwise what what would entice someone who, yeah. who to to go to a to Comicsology and and buy a, a new DC comic or a Marvel yeah. comic unless they already knew so of it you. Yeah, so you've you've watched both Thor and um, uh, X Men First Class in the theater, right? So, right. Um, did Marvel run any comic book ads? See, precisely, that's exactly what they need to do. They no, they they do not do that. They they guaranteed, should. Guaranteed, they're guaranteed. There's comic book ads around the Green Lantern thing. I've I've heard without doubt that there is that they are promoting the comic book either before or after the movie. Okay, good. That's that's what they you need know, like to do. Watch the movie and then after the movie, it's them saying, hey. You like the movie? Here's these Green Lantern titles. Mm-hmm. Yep, that, 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 and, and not just not just uh, promoting so, comics via so the movies. They needed to do other kinds of advertising, TV spots, uh, online stuff, especially. 
they gotta they gotta put some banner ads out there in spinner places. Spinner racks, man. You need to go back to spinner racks. <laughs> you need to be able to walk into any convenience store, any checkout line, there'll be comic books set there. Well that's yeah. how we all get the comic books. There you know well, people nothing's are changed age. as far as that goes. You've still got you've still got six, seven, and eight year olds that are having to ride along with mom and you know, go to the crappy grocery store and ride along in the cart or push the damn cart or whatever. The reward for that is you get a comic book somewhere out of it. Yeah, yeah. Now the only thing you see is the Archie anthologies. Yep, that's true. And I think it's a, I think it's a mistake that we still don't have comic books in those places. I agree. I agree. Uh, did you did, speaking of this? Did you did you uh, read or, or see that um, uh, was it Barnes and Noble? No. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, Barnes, Barnes and Noble got up. I started po- no, started putting up comic no, books. No, 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 no. Yeah, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because they've already had the trades, but yeah, now they're doing now they're doing the the monthlies. Single. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right along with the rest of the magazines, the magazine rack. Yeah, I've yep. seen some pictures of that. So that's good. That's potentially good news there. Getting more mm-hmm. people who may not. Not, con- not good news for comic book. Well, I, it could, I guess it could be good news I, for comic yeah. book. Yeah. Like. Okay. Well, the, let's just. I, unless there's something else you wanted to say, let's. Uh, let's... Oh no! Well, like I said I can talk forever, but <laughs> it's comic books. All right. Well, I guess we'll save it for. We can save it for another day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, we should definitely get together and, and like say after June thirteenth, uh, and talk about the rest of what's coming out. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, Travis, thank you again. Uh, this is uh, again a lot of fun. Uh, I love, I love talking about this stuff with you. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I can, like I said, I always enjoy talking about comic books. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Uh, uh, for those of you who have stuck around for these two hours or so, how, however long it ends up being when I when I uh, edit this, um, thanks for listening and be sure to check out both uh, my website and Travis's. And so mine is Longbox Review at Word, uh, sorry Longbox Review WordPress.com, and then Travis's is Oddfellows Thoughts WordPress.com, and you can check out the things that we post and uh, leave us some comments. And also, you can um, go to uh, iTunes and uh, leave some reviews or, or, or uh, anything about the, the podcast that you like and maybe things you don't like. Either way, love to hear from you. Thanks again, Travis. We'll talk soon.